There have been some disappointments in the Premier League as well for certain teams. Manchester United is one, although they might win the FA Cup next weekend, so we'll talk about them later. What about Newcastle? Because they are this season a Champions League club, maybe ahead of schedule, but they had a raft of injuries, just beset by problems almost from day one. It's, in it's interesting, the injury situation. Uh, a lot of the clubs at the moment. Arsenal didn't have that many. Just a timber yeah. was the main one. Yeah, yeah. But there's been clubs that have been really suffering uh, for, from injuries. Um, yeah, I think Newcastle, and this is a little bit of credit to Mike Ashley, actually, because he had it well run and kept his, kept his hands in his pockets, if you like. That's enabled Newcastle to go out and do what they're doing. And they're doing it right. And I think, I think the owners there are saying... We can't catapult into the top two. We might have to do it gradually. We've got a manager who we trust, Eddie Howe, and let's back him. But this ain't going to be instant. This is going to be four or five years. And, and I think they're going about it in the right way. Sensible. Sensible. Your take on Eddie Howe, is he, is he the man for the long term at Newcastle, which is a huge club? Yeah, I think so. Um, I've played against Eddie's teams, and they're so organised, and he runs a tight ship. And I think he's the right man to do that. Um, Newcastle, massive club and Champions League, like you said. They was did it, have Champions League. Yeah, was it a fluke season? Was it a bit of excitement, everyone coming in? But now I think Eddie's back to basics and he'll, he'll get the boys back up the league. Do you think they can keep their players as well? Because Isak's name has actually been mentioned to come here to Arsenal. And they do have Champions League football. And to balance the books, it might be a necessity, perhaps. I'm not too sure if Newcastle have to balance the books. Well, it's not so much for them, but it's more for BSR. Yeah. So, and FFP, it's to yeah. balance the books. Yeah, yeah. I know money's not an issue. They've got very deep pockets, yeah, but yeah. they have to make sure it tabulates correctly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Apart from perhaps the top three, every club's under a little bit of pressure financially to, to make sure. So I, heard there's, there's, I heard Wolves have got to have a fire sale. You know, Wolves, who, in all fairness, bottom half of the table, and they've got to have a fire sale. So, yeah, it's, it's very difficult living up to these. Uh, uh, fair play rules or financial fair play rules um, but if that's the case then, then uh, Newcastle have to sell then they'll have to sell it's that profit and sustainability rules the PSR that they have here it's still very quite loud I hope you can hear me clearly but <laughs> what about someone like Alinda, Alexander Isak can you imagine him here because he's been so impressive when he's fit yeah he's an out and out striker he's runs the channels, he comes to the feet. He's been good this year. Is he someone you would like to see play for Arsenal? Yeah, I could see I could see him fitting in. I could see him fitting in, but I think Arsenal will go and get probably someone with, with a bit more about, not about them, but like established. Really? Yeah. But he's done it in the Premier League. He's yes. scored again today. Yeah, I know, but I think Arsenal will look outside the box. What about yourself? I mean, I don't know how much of Alan that is like you've watched, but... Uh, no, no, obviously I've said it. And the thing I like about him is that he goes in behind defenders and that pace is frightening. So, you know, as the game wears on, them centre-halves drop a little bit deeper and you're allowed to go into feet. But... Um, They're comparing him at times, not me, but some <laughs> Newcastle fans, saying a bit like Thierry Henry. <laughs> There's only one. There's there is only, only one. one. There but is no, only no, one. quite, you know, that's great. I don't think they should be shouting too loud, no, them Newcastle fans. <laughs> because something might happen. No, no, I think it's interesting. And, and you'll have to ask the, Mikel, you know, the philosophy here. Is it to bring in young players that are going to be around for four or five years? Or is it the instant hit and, and you pay for that to, to give you the lift? So it'd be interesting to see how they go about it in the summer. Because over the last two or three years, it's been young players, young players, young players. But is it time now to go bang? How do you balance that? How do you balance the experience Versus buying for the future, buying young. Well, I think because they've done it, because they've bought so many young players, they can afford to go the other way. And uh, you know, be interesting. It'd be interesting to see what they do in the summer. Yeah. What do you want? Instant hit? Someone to establish or more? I'd like, I'd like that guy to stop whistling. To be yeah, honest. Yeah, he's very, very loud. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. No, I'd like to see an instant hit. Arsenal. They've built the youngsters. They've had the couple few years together now. I think they're just missing that one key. Like Tony said earlier, that one key striker, out and out striker, it's going to score you 20 goals a season. All right.